gon' chew me, cause the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I am your host, Foop, joined by my co-host, Ryan. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you nerds, freaks, and geeks are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications for future uploads, and leave some comments, bro. We need some engagement. And not leave some comments, bro. <laughs> Look. We 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 been here for three years. Who said support? Y'all ain't all subscribing. Y'all ain't all liking. Get in there now. Well, you heard the man. If you're if you're tuning in to this episode, let us know that you're tuning in. Let us know how you felt about this episode. Definitely with the topic at hand, we are going to be covering the Marvel updates from San Diego Comic Con as well as um the minor updates that have been coming up after that. I think. I will say, me personally, I was not prepared for the news that dropped at San Diego Comic Con this past uh, past weekend. Not this weekend, but last weekend. Um, so, how you doing, Ryan? Before we just hop into this mass of an update, how's life? Yeah. I'm chilling. I'm adjusting to being moved in. I'm living my life like it's golden. Living my chilling, life bro. like it's golden. Living my life like it's golden. How you living though? I'm cooling. It's hot. Yeah. That's all I can say. It's hot. Catch yeah. me in September. I might have a major life update. I might have some something of substance to tell you when this weather start cooling down. But right now, it's hot. Look, don't say that and then it starts snowing out of the blue. You're going to be upset. Hey, not in September though. Not, okay. not in September though. We're gonna get we gonna get that fall weather in and then then it's gonna start snowing. But um let's get into these updates. Um let's just start. I'm just gonna read the list. It's a lot. I'm just gonna read the <laughs> list. This is everything from San Diego Comic Con and what came after. So uh at the Marvel panel, they uh talked about three movies. Um, Captain America, Brave New World, which we talked about in our past episode. Um, Fantastic Four, which is officially being called Fantastic Four First Steps. And they talked about Thunderbolts. All of these movies are going to be premiering in 2025, which Captain America 4, February 2025. Thunderbolts, um, I believe, is May 2025 and Fantastic Four in July uh, 2025. So starting with Captain America 4, they talked about, they showed a new trailer for it. They didn't, haven't released it officially. I am feel like they're going to release that at um, D23 that's happening. I believe it's August 9th through the 11th, but it's coming up soon. The big Disney conference where they talk about Star Wars. The theme park shit, upcoming Disney movies, as well as Marvel projects as well. So it's probably likely that we might be able to see the footage that they showed from San Diego Comic-Con at that event. But the couple big things that came out of that, they officially named the villain uh, to be the Serpent Society. And they talked about how Antimantium, which is the substance that makes Wolverine's claws metal, will be introduced in this movie and that the Celestials, um, if you guys remember from the Eternals, are going to be made out of it. So, making the way for X-Men. Like I said, Thunderbolts release, releases May 2nd, 2025. Fantastic Four, First Steps. Like I said, now it's confirmed. I said on the last episode that this was a rumor, but this is going to take place in the 1960s. The footage that they showed um, showed a teaser of Galactus. And some recent news came out that Galactus will be a one of a kind in the entire multiverse with no variant. So this will be similar to America Chavez from Multiverse of Madness, where he will only be the one out of all of the multiverses. Interesting. Okay. Avengers 5 has been renamed from Avengers Kang Dynasty to Avengers Doomsday. So this is playing on what we talked about last episode as well. They have officially dropped 
Kane the Conqueror. And given the title, Doomsday, they're moving forward with Dr. Doom. The biggest news to come out of that is that they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom. And Avengers 5 will be premiering May 1st, 2026. Avengers 6 is still um, called Secret Wars. That's supposed to be debuting May 27th, 2027. The Russo brothers are back to direct both of these Avengers movies. So um, for those who are not familiar, the Russo brothers were responsible for Avengers of Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. And I believe they did one of the Captain America movies. I believe it was Winter Soldier. Um, let me know in the comments if that's correct, but I know they did Infinity War and Endgame for sure. Um, they have some MCU projects that are going to be released in between those two movies. And these are reportedly going to be set in Battle World. So for those who are not familiar with Battle World, this is um, very integral to the Secret Wars storyline, both the 1980s one and I believe that Secret Wars may have came out in like 2015, the new one. I believe so. But because they're moving forward with Doctor Doom, they're going to use the one from the newest storyline where Doctor Doom used the power of the Beyonders to create Battle World from the remnants of destroyed realities after the multiverses collapse. So this is what I was talking about before um, when we talked about the theory of... Um, possibly getting like the rebooted characters and things like that so that's that world that big universe that i told you about that was created with all of the universes colliding that's battle world okay so that is everything that came out of san diego comic-con basically starting to lay out a path of how we're going to basically lead up to secret wars so we're going to spin the block on the conversation that we had last episode. One, what does this mean for the multiverse saga? How do we feel about it? All of these updates. And the biggest thing is, are we excited for Robert Downey Jr.'s return to the MCU? Funny enough, only because I don't have much comic book knowledge. I don't know if I'm excited. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, and I recognize that he's an amazing actor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't have much of an affinity for Doctor Doom. I don't have much of an affinity for Fantastic Four, aside from the previous iterations that were, like, epic. Well, Fox, correct? Yeah, Fox. So it's like, I'm I'm, I'm here. Captain America is not my favorite hero. I know um Hawk, Hawk, uh, old dude took over the mantle. So, I mean, I'm going to watch it. Because there hasn't been too many Marvel movies, and I don't feel like overwhelmed with so much variety anymore now that they've mm. kind of taken a break. But I'm kind of neutral. Like I'm gonna see what y'all gonna do. I'm gonna see what y'all gonna do with the Captain America movie. I watch Deadpool. I see kind of like the little bits of foreshadowing and what this u this universe may lead into based off the the tones they set in that movie. But I'm like neutral. I'm like okay, let's see what y'all do. I'm gonna give it like two or three more movies, and I'm gonna see if I'm enjoying it or not. So I'm going to give my perspective, if we're going to start with Robert Downey Jr., I'm going to give my perspective on the comic fan side, and I'm going to give y'all my perspective on the realistic side of things. Mm -hmm. So on the comic book side of things, I just because of Robert Downey Jr.'s reputation as an actor, I know he's going to body this role. I have no doubt that he's going to body this role. However, I, like I am... Curious. I'm not mad that he's coming back. I just feel like I feel like this was a great opportunity to introduce somebody new into the into the fold with somebody as Doctor Doom because Doctor Doom is if we're going from Doomsday to Secret Wars, Doctor Doom is that key piece that like kicks all this shit off. And I know, and I've been seeing um, theories on Twitter about. He's going to be um, a variant. Like, the the reason why they're bringing him back is because he's going to perform as a variant of Tony Stark, which in the comics, um, when I was, you know, doing my research, there is a variant of Tony Stark on a different Earth that becomes Doctor Doom. Um, the theories are surrounding with Fantastic Four taking place in the 60s and supposedly being on another Earth as well. That's his origin. But... 
if we want to look at the track record of the MCU, they don't have a great reputation with adapting things from source material. So I feel like, I feel like maybe, you know, but I, I, I kind of feel like it might be a stretch if we're going to say, oh, this casting makes sense because in this storyline, I think it's called Invincible Iron Man. I think that's the the storyline where the Tony variant becomes Dr. Doom, that mm-hmm. they're going to play into that. And the reason why I say that, going to my realistic point of view of this casting, Marvel's trying to get their money back. Yeah. They're trying to bring in back the fans because though there have been some gems in Phase 5, in Phase 4, those movies have not been doing well. The Marvels didn't do well. Ant-Man didn't do well. Um, I want I want to say Thor maybe did well. I I didn't even I didn't like Thor in my personal opinion. And, and from a business perspective, they still are kind of going to have to do cleanup on Kang since they want to kind of separate themselves from Jonathan mm-hmm. Majors. It's like okay. We could, we could bring in somebody new, but we're kind of scared. How can we tell all the fans, like, we're away from him and we're doing something that y'all will love? It's like, oh, let's bring back a, a beloved beloved actor from our franchise. Exactly. I feel, I feel like this whole casting choice, despite how you want to look at it, you know, I'm not, like I said before, I'm not upset that Robert Downey Jr. is Jr.'s back, but let's just, you know, call a spade a spade. They're trying to get their money back. They're trying to yeah. get their audience back. They're trying to, like Ryan just said, with the whole Jonathan Major situation, they're trying to basically sweep that under the rug with bringing in Doomsday. And on top of that, casting Robert Downey Jr. as Doomsday. Yeah. From, from a business perspective, it is the overall best decision. Like, mm-hmm. if, if somebody was sitting in a boardroom what new actor can we bring that people just love? Uh, we pretty much have added almost every actor. And some of them are going to be gimmicky, like if we get Shannon Tatum or somebody and mm-hmm. make them the doomsday. It's like, you know what? Let's get Robert Downey Jr. Like, it's honestly one of the best decisions they could have made. Now, this is the other rumor, which, if it's true, I also feel like it's a another smart play on um Marvel's piece. With the whole thing being the multiverse, if they're going to say that Robert Downey Jr. is a Tony variant that becomes Doomsday. They're saying that it's possible that there's another Doomsday casting. And that's actually the Doomsday that we should be worried about going forward. Mm -hmm. So this might be, if anything, almost like a cameo light. Like we're going to see Tony, we might see him once or twice. And then once that real Doomsday come in by like movie five or whatever. Now we got our real doomsday. Yeah, they might really be playing, which I I, I wouldn't mind that either, you know? Yeah, I, don't, I think it's a good I idea. I feel like Robert Downey Jr. has had his time to shine as the face of the MCU as a hero. And I just feel like, you know, I personally feel like maybe we should give somebody else a chance to, you know, shrunk their stuff, especially with somebody like Doomsday. And and give and for the audience members, well, Doctor like Doom, the movie's called Doomsday. For the for the viewers like me, give a little background on Doctor Doom, like his abilities, how much of an effect does he play into the Marvel um, comic book universe, all that good stuff, his origins. So I don't know too much about Doctor Doom, but Doctor Doom is one of the main antagonists for the Fantastic Four. Um, in some iterations, it. I believe he gets his abilities the same way the Fantastic Four do when they go on that space mission. And I don't remember if it was like a meteor or something, but something, they go to space and something happens and they come back with powers. Right. And I think in some iterations, he's also there and then he gets the same thing. But the way that Secret Wars went is that there's this being called the Beyonder and he takes the Beyonder's powers. And at the same time, we have Earth 616 and some other multiverse, some other Earth. And I feel like, and this is stepping a little bit into Deadpool versus Wolverine, um, not too much big of a spoiler, but 
if you guys remember from the the end of the Marvels, Monica Rambo ends up on another Earth with basically the X Men Fox characters. Like Beast is there. He's talking about Professor X, and then there's um Maria Rambo who's playing as Binary. They're saying that that Earth that Monica ended up on in the Earth that Deadpool and Wolverine uh ended up in is the same Earth. Earth one triple zero five. It is possible that that might be the Earth that collides with six one six. Right. So somewhere in that, you know, Doom takes everything, throws it together, creates Battle World, and in the comics, Doom rules over Battle World, and they're all split up into like these different areas. Like this is an area that's ruled by Thor's. I think like Doctor Strange was like his right hand man. Um, and then there are some people who are ended up like trapped on this ship. And those are the people who were like Doom made it where I believe he made it where nobody remembered what happened. But right. there was a subgroup of people that they couldn't find, that they couldn't account for, that did remember. They just couldn't find them. And I think at some certain point in the comic book storyline for Secret Wars, Doctor Strange remembers what happened or he knew all along but he was just playing alongside he was just playing the long game with doom right the whole time so with it being secret wars with it being the multiverse stuff dr doom has a very prominent role in everything that's about to come up Hmm. yeah hearing that and depending on how much they pull from the source material it does make sense to bring back a beloved actor Especially if over time they switch Doctor Doom, that that makes a lot of sense now. I I feel like they still could have did it with a different actor. Now, when when you say beloved, I think there are a ton of beloved actors that could have been brought into the MCU and taken on the role of Doctor Doom. Honest, I, even though I slightly agree, who's left though? Like, who hasn't been in the MCU, and since they're doing cameos like Blade and everything else from people from older franchises as they merge MCU with the Fox characters, mm-hmm. who's really left? Like, who's really left that's popular and beloved? So what I was seeing, um, because Doctor Doom is Romani, like Scarlet Witch is, and there was a whole thing when they casted Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch of how they changed, like, her origin. And they changed in in the in the skin tone thing, like how we how we transfer um, ethnicity and things from comic to live action. Right. Same thing with Doctor Doom. And the top two castings I saw was Cillian Murphy, um, he the leading actor for Oppenheimer, and he played Scarecrow. In the Batman, the Christopher okay. Nolan Batman series. Okay. And Nikolai, I can't remember his full name, but for your sake, Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones. Okay. Uh, honestly, okay. I would have liked him. I would. But, but you, him. but you see what I'm saying. So yeah, I feel like yeah, I Robert, you, I Robert Downey that. Jr. Though I'm not mad at it, but it's obvious that bringing back Robert Downey Jr. specifically was a money move for Marvel to bring yeah. everybody back and to make their money back as yeah. well. To show, uh, you know, show the investors and showing everybody that, hey, we're coming up to the end. We got big plans. We're about to get Robert Downey Jr. back. Let's, you know, s- s- put Robert Downey Jr. to the side for a minute. They brought back the Russo brothers. Right. Infinity War, I believe Infinity War and Endgame are on the top 10 highest grossing movies of all time. So basically they paid big money and they're expecting a big payout as well. Exactly. Yeah, this is an investment. I see it now. So I I'm interested to see what they do with all of this. Um they're talking about bringing in Antimantium. I'm excited on how I'm seeing how they're going to do that because that immediately just flashes Wolverine in my brain. And going back to the rumor that after Secret Wars, 
they're going to start with the X-Men. I think I saw a rumor that the next MCU saga after this is going to be called the Mutant Saga. Which is interesting. Do the do the members of the Fantastic Four, now that they have all these titles and names, because I know you said like other people in the Marvel Universe are technically um, mutants and not superhumans, are the Fantastic Four mutants? So mutants mean that you... Mutants mean you are born with it. The way right. they explain it, you're born with it. The Fantastic Four were regular people, and they flew into space, and something happened in space. I can't remember exactly. And then they got their powers. So they wouldn't be considered mutants the same okay. way that captain america is not considered a mutant the same way um spider-man is not considered a mutant okay so and their title would be superhuman correct yeah they would okay. just you know su- superhuman enhancement okay okay i mean so like the hulk hulk's not considered a mutant like stuff if you if you want to see where the divide is okay well, I'm interested. If anything, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I'm 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 not overly excited for Doomsday because I don't have that much of an affinity for this upcoming saga. But the mutant saga? Now that's something I'm like, okay, I wanna see what y'all gonna do, especially with the way sorry for the spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine, especially the way that um Ryan Reynolds was telling um um Logan, you're gonna be here till you're ninety. <laughs> like I was like I was like, I wonder if that's foreshadowing <laughs> or he just joking. I... <laughs> like you're here till you're ninety. We're never. I, although it's a here. joke, although it is a joke, I could see them doing. I that. could definitely see them doing it, but I don't want them to do it. I don't want them to do it. I want a fresh set of X Men. They are going to pay because his real name is Hugh Jackman. Just yeah. make sure I don't butcher it. They're going to try to pay him so much money to stick around. <laughs> they had him lifting heavy. He over here, you're looking like he got a, his 28 year old body back. Like they're gonna keep him here. <laughs> I understand. I I understand. Like it is a very high, large because right now, at the time of this recording, I believe Deadpool and Wolverine has crossed 700 million at the box office. I and it's look, been how long? We are already talking about how some of these moves that they made it. Uh, um, they're making right now these announcements from San Diego Com- Comic Con are money grabs. I want to let you guys know that Hugh Jackman coming back was also one. Uh, honestly, honest, and here's the thing. Honestly, they're pretty much doing the opposite. They said it seems like y'all love actors. We made we we picked one who had some controversy. Right now, let's bring out all the dolls, all the all the beloved dolls that you all appreciate. One they we got. Out- I would say and Ryan this is Reynolds kinda, is loved, Hugh Jackman, and this is kind of I feel you. And this is where it's like it's kind of like a double edged sword. Because if you look at the previous Marvel projects, there's been a lot of diversity in these projects. You have mm-hmm. the Marvels, which was the lead cast were all women. Um before that, we had Ant Man Quantumadium, where the main villain was Jonathan Majors. We go backwards. We talk about the Eternals and how diverse that cast was. We talk about Shang Chi. We talk about um, trying to think of the other projects, Secret Invasion, with Samuel Jackson leading it, and things like that. And now the the moves that they're making to make these money back is like, yes, we like these actors, but let's put these well loved white men back in the front of the crowd and get our money back. Here's the thing, and this is where it gets touching. Here's where it gets touching. At one point, about three to seven years ago, and that's a weird time frame, diversity was the this makes us money phrase. I'm even learning about that in class. But Marvel, depending on how, because I don't know what those stake, those shareholders and those investors, when they sit down and talk about what are we going to do for the next five to ten years. Like optics and stuff. Yeah. And they're like, this is going to make us money. And then it doesn't make them money. It makes sense to say, all right, let's go to our previous success pattern. And they went back to the success pattern. The first example of going back to that success pattern, Deadpool and Wolverine, has proved Mm -hmm. successful. Like, just, I get the... 
feelings that certain people may feel towards this and how they may be like, oh my gosh, are we just going to have go back to all these old white guys? Well, y'all weren't coming out for the female-led cast. Y'all weren't coming out for the diversity um, videos. Not saying that diversity should be the main focus. It should be plot, character development, world building, mm-hmm. and etc. But they were attempting that. They were attempting that, but it seemed like folks weren't coming out. They got to make and that's money. Fair. And, that's why, and that's why I'm saying it's a double-edged sword. And mm-hmm. that's why I'm saying it's a double-edged sword with this. But I I would say that I am looking forward to how 2025 through 2027 plays out for the MCU. Mm-hmm. The projects that I mentioned that are supposed to be happening between the two Avengers movies, we don't have any official titles. We don't know who they're going to focus on. Right. And I, I'm not sure. And, and we won't get any ideas of what it could focus on until we see really fantastic four i'm i'm going to call this now that we won't have any true idea of where the mcu is going with secret wars until we see fantastic four and what does that release date for fantastic four again that is july 25th 2025 i think captain america 4 and thunderbolts are going to tie together for like the street team the ground level stuff i think those two movies are going to tie in together and I think we're not going to have a true picture or a true hint of what Secret Wars is going to look like as far as the MCU until we get to Fantastic Four. I would argue that's probably going to be the next big blockbuster, too. I, I, I don't let, but man, DC and Marvel are going to have a fun time come July 2025 because that's when the DCU is starting officially. Well, I won't say officially. The cinematic side of the DCU starts officially with Superman mm-hmm. and Fantastic Four drops. I would say the MCU has a leg up by dropping Cap 4 in February and Thunderbolts in May. But if they can't make those shapes, even with the announcements, even with the announcements, if they can't make something shake with those two movies, I would be curious to see how the how the money moves, how the spectrum between DC and Marvel fans weigh when we get to July. Because Superman is one of those heroes where people are going to come out, no matter how bad these Superman and Batman movies have been in the past decade, they're going to come out for Superman regardless. <laughs> I think it's going to be more of the intrigue that too. that pulls them in mm-hmm. because everything's now in the James Gunn. He's been, you know, hinting and showing these promises that things are going to be different, that he has this whole DCU chapter one timeline planned out. I think it's going to be the intrigue more than anything that sends people to the theaters and really on the Marvel side it's really just going to see, uh, seeing how you guys are going to wrap this multiverse thing up. Like, right. were you, you know, bringing out all of this stuff at San Diego Comic-Con just to blow smoke up our ass? Or do y'all really have something, like, planned out for the rest of right. this saga? I'm interested. I'm interested to see how they play it out. And and honestly, now, did anything else from DC come out of Comic-Con? So DC didn't have a panel at Comic-Con. But they did release some stuff. They um, released a trailer for Creature Commandos. Okay. And um, they talked about the Harley Quinn show that's returning in the fall. And I want to say that was it. I think they I think they might have dropped another trailer for The Penguin that's supposed to be dropping this fall as well. But nothing big on like the Marvel caliber stuff. But I do... For the last piece of this, I do want to spend the block to something you said about how they're going to wrap up the Kang stuff. Oh, because talking, yeah, because even at the end of this, if you're excited about Doomsday and everything going forward, like even though they have it laid out, there's still that little speck in this whole situation of what are they going to do about the buildup that they have been doing for the past couple years surrounding Kang the Conqueror. They could, one, you know, 
cut it quick. Doomsday there. Doomsday takes out. I mean, I keep calling this man Doomsday. It's because they named the movie Doomsday, and I'm getting it confused with Doomsday from DC. But um, Doctor Doom, they could make it where Doctor Doom just takes out Kane, like the first. 20 it could be an end credit scene of fantastic four it could be the first five minutes of uh, avengers doomsday just like how those first five minutes of infinity war was thanos whooping hulk's ass and kicking him out for the rest of the movie because that's or, that's, what I, that's what i was asking you right like when they was at that um auditorium not auditorium they was like at that coliseum or whatever with all mm-hmm. those freaking kings like doomsday just flop in and it's like oh See, see, now I got you. <laughs> see, now I got you calling the man Doomsday. Dr. Doom, he just popped in and be like, bow, just like that could be a good end credit scene. And that's that's all I'm saying. Like, I would be curious to see how they wrap that up because they just can't. Now, they could sweep on the realistic side. They can sweep the Jonathan Major stuff under the rug. They just did that. The only reason people are talking about Jonathan Majors at this point is because they replaced, you know, replaced his character, and that was official. I know, like, there were a lot of theories of whether or not they were going to bring him back, if they were just, you know, like how you were saying, seeing the optics surrounding how everything was coming out after the aftermath, but this officially puts it down that he's, as far as the multiverse saga is concerned, he is not coming back. Mm -hmm. But what they can't sweep under the rug is... Everything that they've built up to this point surrounding Kang the Conqueror, which All is both seasons, both seasons of Loki, and the things that happened in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. He was the best thing that even came out of that movie. I mean, not even talking about like um, the reception to the character. I'm talking about the lore. Exactly. I'm talking about the lore. Because they were building him up to be the big villain. That Avengers 5 was supposed to be Kang the Conqueror's movie. Because they can't do no simple Wakanda forever. Like, just have, like, a funeral or something. Like, y'all gotta... Y'all have to give a... What would I be... An overt closing to that character. That y'all have established in y'all franchise as someone big. And it wasn't just the marketing y'all established. He was in the movies. He mm-hmm. was that big bad that y'all established within y'all's own lore. Y'all gotta find a way to get it out there. So it's either gonna be five minutes... Dr. Doom drops down in that Coliseum and takes them all down. Um, or they have some elaborate way of maybe the tools that, you know, Kang, the plans that he was working on sometime, somehow ends up with Dr. Doom. Or his what he was working on was part of a bigger plan, and the bigger plan was Dr. Doom. I would be curious to see how they tie in what's already been done with setting up Kang into what's about to come 2025 through 2027. That's what I'm curious to see. Now, this is the unlikely wild card. What if they don't eliminate Kang? They just push him back. Like Now, I like, saw now I saw that theory too. I saw s- some theories surrounding that because everybody was making the comparison of what happened with Jonathan Majors with Robert Downey Jr.'s situation. And I don't know too much about Robert Downey Jr.'s situation. I just know that Basically, he was, you know, not a real received actor at a point in time, but he ended up getting himself together. And then when he did Iron Man, that's when, you know, the -hmm. check went up, the price went up for Robert Downey Jr. for his performance as Iron Man. And I've been seeing some, you know, some theories of that Jonathan is possible that Jonathan Majors can, can do the same, that right now he just needs to take the L, give it a couple years build up your reputation and then maybe and it might not be the MCU it might be a completely different franchise that you're able to come back in and get you know that real reception that you were receiving before you know you you know it got too hot for you I honestly I could see that now a little bit of it is some wishful thinking but like yeah do a couple of indie films get one two would be lovely blockbusters under your belt whether it's like a creed four or creed three and a half like lion king get some under your belt and then disney might be like hey we we left room for king in our universe because i would they don't have to just kill him off mm-hmm. like could dr doom be controlling him could king be manipulating dr doom depending my on how they play thing, it out 
My only thing, which is why in my my spiel, I was like, it might have to be a different franchise because if we're going off the rumor that the mutant saga is next, mm-hmm. I don't know how Kane the I don't know if Kane the Conqueror fits into that. Like the X Men have their own, the X Men have their own set of adversaries, and given you know, I'm not too in depth with the X Men comics, but from what I know from like the movies and X Men '97, and like you know the bits and pieces that I do get, I haven't seen Kang the Conqueror up against the X Men. So Kang was more so a mainline villain for the Avengers. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe maybe if he if they if if Jonathan plays his cards right, and Disney like three years from now is lenient, they might find something for him. I don't know. Basically, what I'm saying is that he's gonna work for it. I feel like yeah. whatever franchise, whatever franchise, yeah, he he's gonna he's going to have to work for it. Cause however you feel about it, he did fumble the bag. He did. Yeah. How whichever way you look at the situation, he fumbled the bag. It got too hot for him on a Marvel check, and business is business. Yeah. At the end of the day, any investor would say, like, even if they loved him, it's like, hey, bro. It's too hot. His we situation just... his situation was too hot, despite, the... how you, despite how you feel about it. And for the people who be like, they not even caring about that. Y'all, y'all know how social media works by now. The second they announce another movie, and it's like, blah, 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 Kane Part 2. All of that's going to come back up. Every video, mm-hmm. every image. Until there's just as much videos and imagery and clout for him that says he's good again, they ain't going to work with him until then. Not Marvel. Right, that's what I'm saying. And, and that's why I'm saying he might have to pick a different franchise. That's all I'm saying. He need to hit James Gunn. <laughs> that, I mean, if we if we want to look, if we want to look at a true, I mean, if, if we want to look at how they did the whole Flash situation with Ezra Miller. They'll take some risk. <laughs> DC will take some risk. <laughs> now, now with James Gunn being at the head of the DCU, he may have a different point of view. He may have some different policies, some different set of morals. Mm-hmm. But that Flash situation was insane. Was objectively, way worse. Way. Way worse than Jonathan Major's situation. So, like... I don't know, but I say all of that to say I'm curious to see how they wrap up the Kane the Conqueror story in the movies coming up. Is it going to be a quick one, two, and done? They go ahead, get it out of here. That's how we're going to wrap this up. Or if they choose to use pieces that they've already set up, which pieces are they going to use to follow up to Doom? And right. everything that goes in the Secret Wars. That's what I'll be interested. Because they still have the lore. They may not have the character. But they still have the lore. Surrounding uh, with the TVA. Um, and whatever he was doing. In the quantum realm. Yeah. It would be. I'm interested. Because if they close it out well. If they close out his saga well. I think that would be exciting, especially if they tied to Dr. Doom. I'm somebody mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, y'all got to stay consistent. I didn't, I feel like y'all could have done some better one of Conda Favre. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. But I would love to see y'all be creative and artistic with how y'all close that out. Even if it's just a 10 minute scene, mm-hmm. just a little 10 minute scene. Dr. Doom pops up, Iron Man mask comes up, and it's like, it's time not to Iron Man. Well, Dr. Doom wore a metal mask, didn't he? Yeah, but when you said Iron Man, all oh, I saw you you really playing into this Robert Downey Jr. shit. <laughs> so let's let's let, let's just be honest. I, I let's bet five dollars on camera. You don't think that mask is going to look akin to the Iron Man mask since it's already Robert Downey Jr. From what I saw, if we want to go off what was shown at San Diego Comic Con, he had an actual Doom mask. Okay. He had an actual Doom mask. Now so the Doom mask does it get removed like a motorcycle helmet like this? Or uh-uh. can it like June? I don't think it does neither. I think it's just like a faceplate type thing. Oh, honestly, I a- honestly, I think in some situations he can't even take it off. If I remember correctly, like that's like that's his face. Like his face got burnt or something, or he's a metal man. 
I reckon, because if you remember, you remember from the first Fantastic Four, the way that they like, they melted him or whatever, and then he yeah. had that thing on his face. So he like Darth Vader, like he's so ugly. They said, don't ever take that off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, I, he had, he had the Doom mask at San Diego Comic-Con. Now, if, you know, the theories, the playing on that one theory from the Invincible Iron Man storyline, I want to say in that comic book storyline, his mask did look a bit similar to an Iron Man mask. See, the eye, I, I, I'm putting five dollars on that. I, I just, I feel like for optics, is they're just going to be like, here's Doom, rub it down in your face, and uh, I, pro- I feel like that would be so cringe to me. That would be cringe. Is the MCU not all? Does it not already have hella cringe moments? It does, but I just feel like I just feel like if if he's going to be putting all the theories aside, if we take everything at face value, and Robert Downey Jr. is the big bad of this multiverse saga as Doctor Doom, I don't want to see any Iron Man integrations into that. I'll be interested, but then uh, going back to what you said earlier, didn't you say like? In his original universe, he kind of was like. I said, I said, put it. I said, I said, putting all the theories aside. Okay. I said, putting all the theories aside and taking what what they showed us at San Diego Comic Con at face value. She said, "I don't want that." (laughs) That's what this this is the situation at hand. If we're taking what they're giving us at face value, I do not want Iron Man integrated into that. Into you. the embodiment of Doctor Doom. I want if I, he's going to be Doctor Doom, I want him to be Doctor Doom. I hear you. I hear you. I just, I. It depends on what they decide. I could. That's what I'm saying. For that That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And I feel like calling it again. We won't find out for sure until Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four. Mm-hmm. So that's the movie to look forward to in 2025, honestly. Like, that's the movie. That's, that's what's going to kick this. I, In my personal opinion, that is, is what's going to kick this Secret War shit off. That movie mm-hmm. right there. I agree. So that's that's all I got. That's all I got for San Diego Comic-Con. Nothing else. No anime news came out of San Diego Comic-Con. No video game. All right. That's all I got. All right. Well... Let us know in the comments how you felt about this discussion. Let us know how you're feeling about Robert Downey Jr. being casted as Dr. Doom um, and how you feel about everything leading up to Secret Wars. Uh, Make sure you follow us on our social media platform so you can be caught up with all the things that we do anime-wise, video game-wise, TVs and movies, and um, music. Um, We're on Instagram at TheBlurredMobPod. You can find us on Twitter at TheBlurredMob. You can find us on Facebook and TikTok at the Blurred Mob Podcast. Make sure you guys check out those links in the description for the multiple ways that you can support the mob. All of these, um, any donation that you give us goes towards equipment, um, software, and everything that we use to bring you guys these videos today. And with all that being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. See, and I ain't gonna lie, when I was looking... That's when I was doing research on Starfire, they was like, she is so inconsistent with strength. Because I'm like, okay, is. what is Starfire strength? Like, is she super, super strong? Or is she like, it's just very, like... It's, it's very inconsistent. Like, in the...